then you'll never get you'll never get it back. So you, you do need to think about that. But then again, if you're not too slow, a chap called Colin Donnelly, who was Colin Donnelly, he's famous for starting at the back of races and he came through. He always came through quite well, but he never actually won. I remember a club mate of mine, Alan, Alan Puckin, a great athlete, but he, he liked to start at the back, take the pressure off himself, and he always came through, but he never put himself in the position to actually get absolutely everything out of himself as good as he can. So it is that, it is that, you have to make that, that call. Um, I think by racing and challenging yourself in racing in, 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 in um, uh, competitive environments that are, that are challenging for you, um, ahead of your target race, that's a good way to, to, to help, you know, for me, talk about this again later, but for me running, for example, racing um, competitively either overseas or down south um, during the winter and then having your only real race in Scotland has been the national, the first mile or so of the national is actually relatively straightforward, you know, pace-wise because you've trained your body to cope with the rigours of much quicker starts, much quicker sustained pace in the context of, of, of some other some other races. Um, you've got to use the conditions in, in, in terrain. Um, uh, one of the nationals I won in '98 was incredibly bad by bad, bad weather in, down in Irvine, really really bad, and um, uh, it was just impossible to, to, for anyone to make a break during that that race. Um, but I knew when you turned off the the when you turned off up to go up the big hill in those days, it was up the big hill and then down the finish. When you turned up to go up the dragon hill down the finish, there was about, a mile, about half a mile left, or just slightly more than that. So I knew then that once we turned out, I had to leg that last half mile. And it looked as if I had won a sprint finish, speaking all these guys that were supposedly quicker than me, uh, you know, Glenn Stewart and Chris and Chris Keith Anderson, etc. But the reality was, uh, I'd been sprinting since the bottom of that hill all the way down to the finish, and he only dropped off and all the time beat us, you know. So you have to use the conditions and the terrain to your, to your strength. The wind, wind's a big factor for me being relatively small, which my, it is my Achilles heel in terms of, in terms of exposing myself to the wind. So you have to, have to think my way through uh, uh, races and, and, and think about where you're going to make the effort uh, and where you're going to maximise the opportunity to get the gap uh, and, and so on. Um, so you have to run to your strengths. Um, you have to stay positive. Um, uh, and be prepared for the unexpected. Um, one of the story I like to think, I remember running the Renfrewshire Cross Country one year when Laurie Spence was, was still running, still running quite well. And there was a bit of an, an altercation, I think, during the race, i.e. it was a punch up between two athletes uh, near, the front of the, near the front of the field. Uh, but Laurie was a bit, of a bit of a guru at the time, you know, he was the kind of main man in Spangle Valley, if you like. So, um, a number of the 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 Belgian and Spangle guys had a chat with Laurie during the race about this altercation, you know. And I thought, well, I'm not hanging about here. They can have a chat tonight. Like, I'm going at this point, you know. <laughs> so that was the point where they were having this chat about this fight. What are we going to do about it? I liked it and managed to get a gap. And by the time Laurie looked up, I was away. So you know, maybe I'm not saying that that's a typical example of uh, of what might happen in a cross country race, but he prepares for the unexpected, you know. Um, falling over a few times as well, you know, that's hard going, but you have to recognise that if this happens, you have to pick yourself up, dust yourself down, and then uh, and get going again. Okay. Um, I just finished, you all know, filling up the finish. Uh, but it's self evaluation. I, I think it was Chris that told me this. Um, the, the minute you finish one race, you should then be starting thinking about your next race. You know, your preparation for your next race starts the minute you finish one, one race. Uh, and finally, enjoy yourself. So that's just a whistle top tour of, of my kind of what worked for me. And I'm not saying that works for Chris or for Tommy or, or for other people, um, but in terms of training and training philosophy and what I did when I was a youth and what I did as a senior, um, you know, uh, that, that's that's uh, that's how it how it went. Again, you know, as I was saying, always bringing in you know, lots of different things and, and very much asking to have a bit of a focus on cross country this weekend with being a big cross country weekend. Uh, Chris, to extent, I think, may take a, a slightly different angle on it, uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm sure there'll be a lot of different things to take from it. So, I think you're ready to go for it. Can I just go straight into it? Go for it. Okay, first of all, um, nice to see a few old Kent faces. It's, uh, it's good to be back. Um, I haven't done this kind of thing for a couple of years, and Mark gave me a call. I'm like, oh yeah, 
be really good. And, and one of the things that certainly motivated me was if, if I can help anybody in this room just a little bit, then that's great. But also, the chance to catch up with Bobby, and it's a shame Tommy isn't here, because we're a great rivals, but we're also great friends, and I've got an awful lot of respect for, for both Tommy and, and uh, Bobby. And, and in fact, just about everything Bobby said, I would fully endorse. We did something slightly different, and, and I'll just pick up on a couple of them as we go through to re-endorse what he said. There is no magic formula. It's, uh, it really is actually quite straightforward. Running, I mean, Tommy certainly used it. If Tommy was here, he'd probably put a slide that Tommy's a very simple, so running's a very simple. Okay, we just put one foot in front of the other and try and do the start. Um, and, and, you know, really, you could say that is what running is all about. Later on this afternoon, I've got quite a few graphs and stuff, and we can, we can make it technical if you want to. Um, but some of the, we'll just go through some of the basics. And these are just some slides, some old slides that I had. Um, I didn't want to start trying to rework a, a brand new presentation. Uh, the reason I, I particularly like showing some of these is, is it's got some ships in it. And for those of you that know me, I used to be in the Navy for some years, so it's nice to just have a few ship pictures of ships in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> that obviously isn't as near, it's near the sea as uh, some of uh, 2000. <coughs> the other thing I would say, if I'm looking rather bloodshot in my eyes, it's not because I've been out on the beer last night. I've actually just had a couple of hours surfing, which is my new love. I, I do an awful lot of surfing uh, down at Peace Bay. So, uh, that's why I wasn't with you for the run this morning, and I couldn't have run for two hours anyway. <laughs> uh, just what we might, might cover some of this, but um, just a little bit. It's interesting, Bobby started running about 15. I was about the same. I used to play rugby, believe it or not, at school. Um, the only place I could play was hooker in the middle of the scrum. And I loved that. But at the same time, I always had this love for running, but I hadn't really got into it as such until I was about 14 or 15. And, and similar to Bob, we went down to the local club. We had to do it at school, at an annual cross country race. Found out I was oh, I'm pretty good at this, certainly better than I was at rugby. Um, and, and so I, I ended up joining the local club. Um, my background for the first three, three or four years at the club was very much a track. We would be trained on the track probably a couple of times, uh, a couple of times a week. And looking back, that's probably really helpful where I got a lot of my speed from. Uh, although at the time I didn't realise it, I didn't consider myself fast at all. And, and I don't think I was particularly fast, but I had a, a very good turn of pace. So I could change speed quickly and over 60, 70 metres, that, that helped me an awful lot at the, at the end of races, as, as this man will know. Um, but Bobby also mentioned the 98 National. Um, and, and the one thing, one of the things I would say to all of you is do learn about those, those guys, the competitors, the people that you're going to be racing against, because it's really, really important. I knew that if I was to beat this man, you had to hang on to him from a thousand metres out. You just knew if he was still there, it was going to become extremely uncomfortable. Because Bobby had this ability to wind it up, I had the ability to change pace. Uh, and Tommy had an ability to go in the middle of the race. And if Tommy was on form and he get in 10 yards, then his confidence just grew and it'd be 100 yards. But you could, if you could mix it up with Tommy and undermine that confidence, then normally you could, you could out, outrun him at the end. And it was those sort of things, those subtle things that you learn about your rivals. Um, and while I'm on that, I mean, Bobby also mentioned about, you know, it's the first race you do in Scotland, or one of the few races you do in Scotland is a national because you've been down south. That's going to stand you in, a lot, in, in good stead. If you're going to run the inter-counties or the trial, and you're going to try and make the British team, and to all of you, I would say, that's what you're striving for. That's what you should be aiming for is British vests, it's not just within the district or, or the Scottish. Then you've got to get down and mix it with those guys on a regular basis so that you can, you can work out how to race against those better athletes set uh, down so It's a bit of a diversion. There's a bit of, there's a bit of history there, uh, some of you may not know. I, I joined the Royal Navy, so not the best career if you want to be an international athlete. But hey, that's what I wanted to do, uh, and it actually it worked fine for me. Uh, there were times when I was at sea, you had to train extremely hard, do lots of circuits, had to adapt your training, as Bobby mentioned, um, but you get on with it, because that's what you have to do. There's, there's, there's no good making excuses. Um, and a little bit about, uh, I'm no longer president of Carnegie, you know, this is an old, an old presentation. But it was a fun year when I was there is some of the achievements. Um, some of them speak for themselves. One of the ones that I'm particularly proud of, well, all of them really, I think this is, this is quite interesting. Um, 
I wasn't too bad at 400 metres for a, a short guy that, that wasn't particularly fast. It's not that fast, but it, it's not bad if you can run a half marathon at, at that sort of pace. So it, it, it was a reasonable, it was a reasonable range of, of ability. Um, this is particularly pleasing. Eight times I went to the World Cross Country Championships. Um, that was that was good. Um, and yeah, Commonwealth Games was a highlight. Um, but 14 consecutive Navy Cross Country titles it was a big personal challenge because you had to be fit on the same day, 14 years in a row. And that's quite a challenge to make sure, you know, there's a couple of times when I was carrying a bit of an injury or I'd been ill or you just, you just basically, you, 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 you're bullshitting, you're bravado, you get to the front of the race and you make people think that you're fitter than you are. And a couple of times I've won a couple of races that fitness wise I probably shouldn't have done. So there's all sorts of stuff going to the mountain running, mainly because of this man, the success that him and Tommy were having. Uh, and they said, Chris, you really should join us. We can win some medals. And we did. We won some medals at the European World, uh, the European Mountain Championships. And we'll go to that later on. It was great, great fun in the back end of my career. Great fun. However, if you're a young athlete, the appeal is very attractive. But my personal view is don't get tempted into that if you're serious about the track the road because it can be a diversion and it is it's a different skill it's a different uh, different mental toughness that you to, to, i think to be very successful at mountain running you've got to be a bit of a hard nut and that probably comes with quite a few years of hard endurance which is probably like bobby and tommy and, and late Latin and myself who are relatively successful um just really to try and back up what, what bobby said about the club background. I had a great coach, we had a great training group, um, kids of my own age, I was, there was about 12 of us, all within a year's age group, all the same age, one year above or below, and I was probably about 9 to 10 in that group. So I wasn't, you know, when we used to go to relays, and this was, I was, you can probably understand from the accent, but I have lived in Scotland for 20 years. I was brought up in England, so I was running for Derby and County Athletics Club, so we did all the local races, the Northern Championships, uh, and I couldn't make the 18 for my own, for the youths, I used to race at youth level. Um, so I was in the B team for the relays and that kind of thing. But somehow there's just something there, you think, no, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be reasonably good at this. I think, I think it's, gonna, it's gonna suit me. Uh, but at the time, I was probably only running three or four times a week, if that, a uh, little bit of track work. And I wasn't doing any long runs at all, um, which, which, which was, I say it's a shortcoming, it, it wasn't, it was a shortcoming at the time, I wasn't having much success, I was 108th in my first English schools, um, I was 120th in my first English national at, at, at youth age group, um, so you look at that and you think, well, out of all these guys, who, who are the guys that are going to make it, or maybe, maybe, maybe make the British team in five years' time, <clears throat> I, but I certainly wouldn't be one of those guys that said, oh, this, this guy looks a day like. So, you know, stick with it. If you're not the best in the pack at the moment, it's, it's not a problem. Um, providing, depends on how hard you're training. I wasn't training hard. I knew I wasn't training hard, and I, that, there was a reason for that. I just didn't want to do the volume of work that the other kids at my age were doing. I just used to skive a bit, because I just thought, doing. And I've got written down here, one of the interval sessions we used, we used to do, listen to this, I mean, Maybe some of you are doing it, God forbid, at the age of 15, 16, 18 two hundreds with a hundred job recovery, two sets. Two sets, and I was thinking, God, this is, this is a bit much. Um, and I'd have to run down to the track and back, because you know, my mum and my, my dad had the only car and he was off working. So at the age of 15, 16, when you're just getting into the sport, I used to be coming knackered, absolutely knackered. So I, you know, I wasn't running 32, so I was probably doing 36. So that was a bit of a lots of competition. As they, you, know, you, learn, you learn the basics, you certainly learn track, track etiquette, you learn how to run in a group. That's something I've found. I mean, I'm, I'm coaching, um, coaching John Newsom at the moment, and, uh, and he, he finds it has found it quite difficult running in a group on the track because it's a skill, it's a bit of a skill that you have to learn if you're running. Um, Cross country session, but one of the things I, I learned is being in close proximity with five or six other people at speed on a track, and you have to learn to try and relax in that position. Um, otherwise, when you when it does become serious, I'll not have those those basic skills. 
And then I started to run with the seniors when you're 16, 17. Bob, Bob we talked about his Wednesday night 10 mile run, okay, pack run, yeah, pack run, right. Just a, the good guys were off. There was a good, good athlete in our club, a guy called Nicky Lees, some of you remember, top 20 in the world cross. Uh, and another athlete called Chris Woodhouse, stay with the big stars. They'd go out for the Sunday morning pack run, and you went along with them, and you either hung in or you got lost. This was probably at about 17, 17 18. Um, and I'm not sure ethically whether that's the right way, but it, you know, it, it, it works. Uh, and, and, and the older ones all know that kind of mentality when they use that. I'll perhaps talk a little bit more about the thinking athletes. Um, there's a real message there. This is not just about getting your spikes on and going off the road. Those guys that can think it through, both in training and in program, and think it through in races will be successful. You don't have to be the fittest or the best athlete to win a race. You have to think your way through about actually having it. Bobby talked about the 98 National. There's no doubt that's why he won that race. He thought it through. He knew where the wind was. He knew what he had to do to beat myself and Glenn. And it was Keith Anderson. And we actually finished in reverse order from our, from our relative track speed. So Glenn was fourth, I think I was third, Keith was third, and you won it. And if you'd have put us in a track race of 1500, we sort of would have been the other way around. But the four of us all together with a K to go. So you probably think, well, Glenn's going to win this because it's going to be a sprint finish, but it's quite the opposite. That's not the ship I was <laughs> 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 Um, this is interesting. I had to become self-coached because um, when, you, when you're in a completely alien environment, you know, you, you, and, and that's probably why the thinking athlete is linked to that point. I start to think, right, what is it that, that what is it that works for me? What do I need to be doing? How do I get on with this? Uh, actually, thinking through. Um, and it, and it's, it's pretty poignant, really, because it was it was I've been in the navy a couple of years and had my first big breakthrough. Um, and there was a bit, of, a bit of stuff in athletics recently, and all of a sudden people sort of become interested in you. Uh, and that's when actually Frank Hall came up and said, look, I've been, you know, don't really know much about you. And, and Frank Hall started writing to me uh, and giving me some ideas and some sessions. Um, and, and the sessions he was giving me, again, the thinking athlete, I thought, yeah, that's fine for Tim Hutchins, but I'll just water that down a little bit. You know, five by a thousand in two thirty five was the something I was not capable of coping with. Um, but the principles were there and I thought, right, okay, I don't like that now. So so I would just soak in as much information from as many different people as, as I could. That's the ship I was on. Um, that's just I went I went down to the the uh, South Atlantic to the Falcons at the back in the day two. I was at sea for five months, one week for short of five months. Uh, we came back on the, the 17th of December, 1982, um, and on the 28th of January, 1983, I finished 15 counties. So um, that was probably, in terms of personal achievement, that's probably one of the best things I'm most proud of. Not many people know that, they don't know that. You line up, they're not saying, oh, Chris is going to get medal because he's be at sea for five months. You just, you just get on with the race. But I learned an awful lot about myself. I was in the funnel space doing shadow boxing, circuits, press ups, absolutely anything you can do in a small environment. Um, and whenever the weather's like you can see there, you have to get out on the other deck and run around. So yeah, I've got an hour around and around the ship, eight hours to the That's what you do. That's why I'm the way I am. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, there is a point about that, but I'm not going to go on towards the history of that. Uh, I, I spent to about a couple of years on uh, Illustrious, uh, on an aircraft carrier. Fantastic. You look at all that space to run on. That space is normally full of helicopters and sea harriers, and you don't get anywhere near the upper deck. So it's even worse on that, actually. You get less opportunity to train on one of those because 24 hours a day, you're actually at flying ops. Um, obviously not in that. Um, a little bit about just what did I do when I was a senior athlete, just to try and keep the theme the same. Um, I used to run, I used to run twice, this is a little bit about the daily stuff, but I, I trained twice a day. All the sessions that Bobby's mentioned, I did very, very similar. 
Um, there is no real difference. You do your long intervals. I always try to stick a track session in there because I think it's important to keep, keep close to speed. Uh, well, I say it's speed, you know, it's, it's relative speed. It's the ability to, to, to move really, really quick, um, even for the cross country. Those of you, certainly players here, those of you that have had the, the, the honour of running in a World Cross Country Championship, it's like a 1500 metre race for the first 1500 metres, and then you've got another eight of them to follow on, and it's just a bloody nightmare. It's really, really hard. You don't have that leg speed, you're just going to struggle. You're just never going to get in the race. Yeah. Just want to talk a little bit about this. Bobby talked, uh, mentioned it. Um, sort of being single-minded and thinking about in the race. I did something probably without realising it, that, that apparently is a, a, I had some, when lottery funding came along, I got a little bit of lottery money. I used some of my lottery money on some sports psychology. Not because, you know, I, I'm a nutter or, or whatever. I just thought, I wonder if there's anything in this. I wonder if there's anything that can just give me that extra edge. And I spent a lot of time with a guy called Richard Cox, who works in Scotland, some of you may well know him. If any of you want to spend 40 or 50 quid for an hour, it would be his money well worth spending because he was absolutely excellent. And we talked about this, this concept of when you're out training, and I know lots of you will do this and you might not admit it, when you're out there, you're in the Olympic final, aren't you? When you're having a good day and you're out on a run, there's these things going through, thinking I'm in the Olympic final and I'm running really well. And it's, it's a form of positive self-talk. And for me, it really, really works. And there's times in training where if you're out on your own, you've got to put yourself, to make yourself run that little bit harder, put yourself in a race situation and talk it through in your brain, in your mind, as though you're hanging on to somebody in an international race or whatever it might be. And it's amazing the effect it has on you physically and mentally. Um, and I, I, I just did quite a lot of that stuff. And when I was talking to Richard Cox and I started to open up a little bit, he said, that's actually not as daft as it sounds. It's actually, it's a form of visualization. Um, and, and, it, and it works. And we, 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 we um, don't mind sharing this now. I don't, I don't race anymore, so you can all have it. Anyway. There's a technique I started to use where in a race, if it really starts to hurt, you know that feeling, you get the tummies going and you're thinking, I can't quite hang on. It's going to we just said what you've got to do is you segment the next bit of the race into, into blocks. So the particular example I'm going to use, um, is that if you're in a road race and the lead car's there and you're with the lead group, so you're looking enough to be able to see the clock as opposed to being up in, up in the distance, and it's really, really hurting, think right, whatever happens, I'm going to hang on with this guy for the next two minutes. Whatever. I'm just going to go with it. And then if, I, if it all blows up, fine, because you're starting to lose touch anyway. And after that two minutes, sometimes you might just have the mental toughness to say, do you know what, I'm going to do it another minute. Now, I used that against a guy called uh, Nigel Adams in this 1-10K in about 1991. Now, Nigel was running exceptionally well at the time. I was running well as well, but got to it was about 7K and I was losing touch. And I started to use that, and I said, I'm going to hang on to Nigel until we go through 8K. And I did. Uh, and about 8.5K, because I ran the previous year, I knew there was a slight climb, but I was quite good at, at climb. So I said, right, if I can just hang on to that climb, then, he, then we've only got a K and a half to go, and if you, you know, that would be fine, and I'll finish second. Well, anyway, to cut another story short, I got through my bad patch, got to 9K, and we were still alongside of each other. I thought, well, there's no way he's not going to let him beat me, and, and, and I had to rinse him. But I'm convinced that was down to this, this mental toughness. Because prior to that, having that kind of technique, I'd have probably just let it drift. And you all know what happens. Once five yards becomes ten, it's, you know, it's very, very difficult to get back. So have a think about that. It, you do need to work at it. You can't just go, right, I'm going to go out tomorrow, I'm going to race in the national, I'm just going to hang on to the leaders or whatever, because it doesn't work that way. You have to work at it. You know, you're training. Just something to think about. Circuits, I started to do a lot of circuits later on in my season, in my career. Probably because of the Navy work I needed to sometimes when you can't run, you need to keep it otherwise. But from about, um, from about 93, 92, 93, when I, when I was sort of in my early 30s, 
uh, I start to do a regular circuit twice, twice a week. Happy to talk to anyone about the detail of that, uh, either at lunch or in a workshop. Definitely helped me because I, you know, I was able to keep wearing my last British vest. I won my last British vest when I was 38, um, and I, I won the national in 2001, just short of my 40th birthday. And, and I'm convinced it was the gym work that helped me do those, those kinds of things. And that's just the Navy stuff. Being in the Navy and having a family, and all of you in university, don't give me any of the rubbish. I'm at university, I'm studying, it's hard. Bullshit. Okay. <laughs> Many of you will know Peter Elliott worked in the steelworks, um, so he had to get up and start his shift at 7:30 or whatever till 4:30. So there's a quote: "It's 2:30 maybe." So he would get up and do his run in the morning, um, and we've all done that. If you're going to be successful, you've got to find a way around it. There's no other excuse because you don't get medals for end but you get medals for results. Um, so I think that's a great. That's just, uh, this is a bit more about, uh, I think that was part of the talk I did about my career. These guys completely inspire me. You've got to have your heroes, um, obviously at the highest level, but also who inspires you locally and who inspires you within Scotland and within Britain. And, and find out, speak to those people, find out what it is that they do that you're not, the, the, the tips or things that they like, and have a look at what their routine is. Now, uh, it doesn't mean to say go and copy it, but Bobby spoke very wisely about going to the World Cross. I remember my first World Cross about him. He was there as well. He was there, yeah. And there's all these guys in there doing strides, and it's just like, you think, wow, that's amazing. I need to do some of that. And that's because you just get completely taken to the But, you know, you do, need, you do need your people that inspire you. And the other thing as well is, is you sometimes need self inspiration. How many here use a training diet? Okay, if you, if you don't use one, start using one. Not for any fantastic reason, but there's nothing more inspirational when you're coming up to the national, or, or for, for me it was the British trial, that was always my focus. When you look back and you think, you know what, I've just got three and a half months of really, really good work under my belt. And it's actually there with the page. So you go 92 miles, 97 miles, 94 miles. 70 mile because it was an easier week and blah blah and, you, and, you, and just reading that yourself think, do you know what, I'm in really good shape now. It matters, it makes it made a big difference to me anyway. So training down is a little bit like a career. But there's, there's, there's various things because this is a bit of other, other presentation. Just touch on this and Bobby will know the rest of that. Okay, who's trained at an airport? You used to train at a service station down the motorway. Okay, if you haven't, and you're doing a big journey, and you need to run, do it. Find out where the service road is. Every service motorway station, at the back somewhere, behind the back of the car park, there'll be a road. You can run off it into the distance for 20 minutes and run back. And if you've got a wife who's understanding as mine, and the kids, she'll take the kids and give them a cup of tea, so she says, then and I come back, there's dry kit in the boot, you get changed. If you're doing five or six hours on a, a long journey and, and you need to train or you've, you've got to get two runs in, then you might have to do this. So there's no reason why you can't do it. Airport's a bit more difficult, you know, it's a bit long, yellowish. <laughs> and I'm suggesting when you're in this, you know, when, you, when you're in that hospital, you hold them down, when you're there for a while, just so you can put it in. But think about it. Talk you some technical stuff if you want to talk about goal setting. I've got lots of slides on that. Plan your training, a little bit off of it. Five times key sessions. Key sessions are really, really important. Bobby mentioned about the easy day and hard day. That, that's, that's a, you know, it's a very, very good rule to follow. However, you also need, and this needs to be, this is for the coaches and the senior athletes, junior athletes, be very careful with what the information I'm about to say. You do need to learn to push the envelope. You need to know where the edges are because if you don't ever get 